Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is a tutorial for Project Spark. And today we're going to be having a look at how to make uh, animated uh, animal models. Now, um, Project Spark, in all their wisdom, gave us a lot of animals, but most of them have two legs. And it's very difficult to actually make a four-legged animal um, using those frames. Um, and also because they were early um, models in Project Spark, they don't really have the attachment sockets that you would actually need to, to uh, make a successful model. And the only four-legged model they gave us was the wolf, and that has a very particular gait. It really moves in a strange way, uh, which is not necessarily suitable for most animals. So, um, and also it's rather furry and large, and um, it's quite difficult to actually attach things to it without making the wolf invisible. So you end up having slightly detached legs and things. It's, 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 it's a little bit awkward. Now, I was watching a dream stream, uh, the Halloween stream, and in that there was a pumpkin headed horseman on a skeleton horse. And in dreams, they also only have a framework mannequin, just a mannequin. They didn't have a four legged one. And they asked the developer, how did you do the four legged animal? It looks really great. And he said, oh, I use stop frame animation. Just a throwaway line, stop frame animation. There you go, sorted. Um, I've no idea how that was done, but I thought about it and thought, yep, I know how to do stop frame animation in Project Spark. Maybe it will work for us in there. And did a little experiment and I'm quite pleased with the result. Let me show you what I made. So I fenced off this area here and I have a lot of horses all running around. Now I'm not an animator, um, I don't do animation um, and so the animation is, is okay, it could have been better I think, a bit, bit more practice and also the legs are bones, uh, you probably want to make it a little bit more um, fleshy looking, maybe using stones or something. I've also got a little dog running around couple of dogs running around and I think that was a little bit more successful my second attempt at animation and I think that looks amazing um, so I say so myself there's my little dogs um, right so let's have a look and see how it is done but right, first of all um, you need to know that the horse itself um, does not move it is attached to a logic cube this is the logic cube at its feet here and that is the object that moves around and it moves around using a wandering villager brain which I've put in this cube now the reason I haven't used it directly is because I need to change it a little bit because the wandering villager brain um, it stops and starts that might be okay uh, but I don't want it to do that I want it to continually run so I've amended it slightly and I've also put in some um, some sounds some footsteps and some snorting so here is the brain that I've altered. I'll just show it you. I don't need to go through it. Um, and I've added this extra thing at the bottom to stop it from um, running off and getting stuck in the fence. Uh, sometimes it does, but the idea is it's going to come away from the fence if it gets uh, too close to it. So there we go. So there is my wandering villager brain that I've put into uh, my horses. Uh, and also the dogs as well. They, they use the wandering villager brain too. So here is my horse and as you can see it comes with a lot of a uh, lot of parts and it's attached to this logic cube. So let's go into that first of all. So here you have, here he is the once add brain logic cube and that's that wandering villager uh, brain. I've set the pace to be a little bit faster. I'm not sure whether that actually does anything but we'll, uh, I, think it, I think it makes it a little bit faster, there was a little bit slow. slow. And uh, here is all the animation code. I'll explain that in a minute. And um, if we go right down to the bottom, um, this is um, which is what plays our animation. So um, let's have a look at the horse. Um, let's, I've glued it all together. This is all glued, so let's unglue it so you can see how I've done it. Okay, so I'll show you. I've got back legs and front legs. I've called these um, F1 through to F5. So there's five frames of animation. So I've made my legs as the animation. That's number five. And these are the front legs. 
so this animation sequence, it will match the animation sequence of the back legs. The back legs are slightly different to the front legs. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below of uh, a video that's got some, uh, a couple of videos actually, that has got some really good um, stop frame animations of a, uh, a horse and a dog movement. And all you have to do is, is copy the position of the legs as, as close as you can. Uh, and uh, you should get a nice sequence. Um, here is my sequence for the front legs. And also there's a sequence for the head going up and down, etc, etc. So you have um, these things in position and you, you glue them all together and then you stick them in position. You want to make sure you get these in pretty much this, the, the same position. So that ball is in the same position. You could glue it, but um, so I've done that like this and you just move them into place. It's easier if you stick them on a ball, I find. You can always make the ball invisible um, or you can make it brown, make it part of the, the horse. There we go. So there is its front legs. Whoops, there is its front legs and you've got his head and in its back legs. So let's have a look at the cube. So first of all, um, it's got a countdown timer. So every six frames, it's going to change a number variable. And that number variable I've called sequence, sequ SEQ for short. And um, so when that sequence gets to the number five, we're gonna put it back down again. But if the sequence is less than five, it's going to increase by one. So it should go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that's what it's doing. It's counting up one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, every six frames. Now, obviously, the speed of this, uh, how fast you uh, do the loop will determine how fast the animation runs through its sequence. Now, if we go th to the top here. And uh, let's see what it's doing. So when the horse is moving, so it only d moves these legs when the horse is actually moving. Where when the sequence equals two, we're going to show the uh, down head. Otherwise, the down head will be invisible. So what we're doing is we're turning the visibility toggles of all of these objects on and off. So you only see them in the sequence, part of the sequence where you need to see them. And this creates a stop frame animation. When sequence equals four, we're going to see the up head. Otherwise, if it's one or three or five, then it's going to show the middle head. Okay, so when sequence equals one, we're going to see uh, the back legs one and the front legs one. Otherwise, they're invisible. And the same for number two. Same for number three, and same for number four, and same for number five. So there's five frames in my horse movement, and that's it. That's all you need to know. So you're just toggling the visibility for each frame. Now, my dog, um, I will separate this one out. Let's, um, I need to unattach. There we go, look at that mess. Uh, we'll unglue the, the dogs. Uh, this time I've done a, uh, an entire dog animation. I have got them in sequence. That's number two. So there we go. So we've got one, two. And I've used stones and things to make this pumpkin seeds for ears. That's number five. And as you can see, there is a lot more animation frames for this dog, which is why I think the dog was a bit more successful. The more frames you do, obviously, um, the, the more uh, fluid the animation will be. So we go. That's frame number 10. Uh, 
that's frame number eight which means that one goes in there so now you can see the whole movement of that dog this is 10 frames of animation the actual uh, animation thing that i did uh, it had t uh, 13 i think frames of animation but i thought uh, the 10 actually worked so i left it at 10. so there we are there's your 10 frames of animation for the dog and uh, your cube oh like that your cube is pretty much the same as the other one um ignore that um that was something i was trying to uh uh do that didn't quite work okay so otherwise the same is the same um and, but i've also wanted to color my dog because i made him brown and i thought i want to make him a little black dog uh, and so i've changed this solid color there but otherwise it's exactly the same um except of course um i've only got one thing to worry about only one object to make visible and invisible so one two three and it goes all the way down to ten and it's exactly the same as before except this countdown timer is every two frames and um there's my sequence um of ten it's exactly the same as the horse so if i show you now i don't think this is going to work now is it going to work there we go you can see as i've separated them out there you go there it is moving there's its animation so you could test out its animation to see if it's what you like but the best thing is when you take them and put them all together and then glue them up and then stick them on your logic cube your logic cube will then run around and your animation will play and move with your cube it's as simple as that it's a lot of uh of work to get um the animations done uh you might be spending a little time doing this uh but the best way to do this by the way is to take your frame clone it and then unglue it move your bits and pieces around rotate it you know whatever it is that you need to do let's move his leg like that there we go that might be all you need to do for that that frame change and then you just multi um edit the whole thing there we go then glue it back together and there you have your next frame um it's a very good idea to uh name your frames so you don't get confused remember to do it straight after um so that, that would be say that's that's frame three so there we go i've created the frame, frame three uh it's very important uh, otherwise you can get confused about which order these things are in so that's how you do it you glue you glue change re-glue copy change that's how you do it so there you go there's how to do uh, animal animations and obviously you can do uh, other animations as well um, using this method uh, but um, I showed you animation before that was pretty static and did not move this is uh, this is moving this time and I think it looks quite effective so uh, let me know in the comments uh, what sort of things you'd like me to see and uh, like, like me to make in Project Spark and I will have a go for you uh and if you've managed to uh, use this technique and made your own animations i'd love to see them please post them up on the project spark team club right thank you for watching and keep sparking <laughs>